Hello, I'm Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and we are watching Video Voters Guide today at Metro East Community Media. We're talking with candidates running in the November 2016 general election. With me today is Janelle Bynum, who is running for House District 51. Janelle, welcome. Thank you Thank for coming. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you. We're going to just get started with interesting questions. First of all, please describe your district. Oh, my district, I say it's the best district in the whole state. It includes East Portland, Damascus, Gresham, Boring, Happy Valley, and North Clackamas. So it's diverse in terms of its terrain, um, the uh, socioeconomic status of the families that live there, as well as the racial diversity. So it is a beautiful district full, full of uh, wonderful people. Terrific. Diving into the issue of the moment, or one of them, Measure 97. Mm -hmm. If it does not pass, how would you address the predicted budget shortfall, especially for education, social services, homelessness, affordable mm -hmm. housing? Well, as a mom of four um, and with kids in public schools, I am very, very concerned about um, what we'll be able to provide our students um, going forward. This problem of education funding isn't a new one. Um, it won't be solved overnight. But I think bringing my business experience and learning um, and, and what I've learned over the years in terms of balancing a budget um, and in terms of prioritizing, I think that I'll provide a, a very necessary voice in the legislature. And also, um, I think my experience as being um, an engineer um, is coming up with creative solutions to very tough problems. So um, we absolutely need to take care of our young people and our uh, critical services, including um, taking care of our seniors. Um, and, and just working families in general. So it's, it's gonna be a matter of priorities. Okay. And what about legislative priorities for gun safety? Well, I think um, Oregon has a long history of recreational um, use um, with guns and, and I think it's important to protect and respect the Second Amendment. But as a mom, I, I think that um, making sure that we protect our children from um, gun violence and protect um, just people in general, I think is important. Uh, the way I think of it is kind of like pools. So we do, um, we go above and beyond uh, to protect people from drowning. So it's not the pool that's the issue, it's the drowning, right? And so we erect fences, safeguards. We um, talk to people about have, making sure their children have swim lessons so that they understand water safety. Um, and then we also, um, you know, look at infrastructure and making sure that when uh, a family uh, decides to put a pool in, they have alarms. They, they have all the things that they need to make sure that people are able to enjoy something without um, losing life. So I think that that's um, having an important conversation about what safeguards we can put in place. Um, that's important. Also, again, I'm data driven, and so being able to look at what the real facts are um, in any areas where um, people are losing their lives unnecessarily, we need to um, address that. So for me, that's suicide. I have a teenage um, girl, and I have a, a tween boy, and one of the um, biggest issues in Clackamas County, as told to me by the sheriff, was suicide. And so making sure that we address um, the mental health of our young people, also the mental health of um, our veterans that have served us so honorably, making sure that they um, have the services they need to prevent any unnecessary loss of life, I think is important. So that's where I am on gun violence. All right. Um, do you th how, how can the legislature ensure adequate funding to address the priorities of our transportation infrastructure? Transportation is perhaps the biggest issue in our district. Um, as I mentioned before, it's, it's a pretty large district, but the one thing that keeps coming up is Powell Boulevard. Um, if you've ever walked along Powell, you'll know that um, children and families are exposed to fast-moving cars within just a few feet of where they're walking. Um, and, you know, it's a result of, you know, just, just the history of being annexed into the city of Portland. But we absolutely need to make sure that our families and our kids can have safe routes to school, go to the grocery store. Um, 
even lighting is an issue in the district. Um, so those are things that people want. On the southern side, it's, it's things like the Abernathy Bridge and the amount of time that families are sitting um, on our highways just waiting to get home. So those, those, are, those are priorities just from a, a quality of life um, standpoint. The other, um, the other important thing is making sure that when we invest in infrastructure that the jobs that go along with it um, are, are good jobs. And so I, I think that the tradesmen um, are really interested in um, working. So this can be something that's very good for our entire state, so. Okay. What more, if anything, do you think that the state of Oregon should do to reduce carbon dioxide emissions and increase local and state production and use of alternative energy? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, one reason we have emissions is because we have gridlock and um, our trucks sitting on freeways, our cars. Um, that to me, when you, when you start to look at the source of emissions, why do we have the amount that we have and when we can cut right through it, I think that that's an important um, place to start looking. And so again, going back to that transportation package, um, Powell Boulevard, 205, um, making those investments so that we have goods and services and families that can move around the regions um, efficiently, I think that that's a, a good place to really start. Mm -hmm. And as a legislator, how do you envision a statewide approach to homelessness and affordable housing? So right behind transportation, housing is a big deal for us. Um, and. And the human side of it, you know, can't be understated. So for me, we have families of children um, that are showing up at schools that need wraparound services. That to me is, is very important. We have um, veterans that are not being cared for even after they've, they've given their lives um, for service in our country, for our country. Um, so it's a community by community approach because even in District 51, um, it looks different in terms of affordability and access. So in East Portland, um, we're, we're seeing um, people literally being priced out of their existing homes. More towards the, the southern side, we see um, families saying, my kids can't afford to move out. And so, so we're starting to see it just show up in different pockets in different ways. But I think, you know, rolling up our sleeves and coming up with community solutions um, for families, I think, is the most important thing that we can do on a on a pocket-by-pocket a -pocket basis, working together, business communities, and um, our government. Thank you. That's how much time we have. <laughs> so, thank you all for watching. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. The general election is November 8th, and the last day to register to vote is October 18th. Please, be an informed voter. Get the information you need about ballot measures and about candidates. And be sure to exercise your right to vote. Thank you for being here. And Janelle, thank you for being thank here. Thank you. My pleasure. It's great talking with you.